Hey, what's up everyone? I think you're going to enjoy this week's topic because we are going to talk about one of the most popular architectural patterns for iOS apps called the coordinator. And we are going to see how this coordinator pattern is going to enable us to efficiently encapsulate the navigation logic of our iOS apps. But before we start diving into this topic, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video. This video has been sponsored by Realm. If you've never heard of Realm, it's a fast and swifty alternative to either Core Data or SQLite that's going to make persisting your data basically as simple as working with Swift objects. And you can actually see here an example of what the code looks like when you want to persist data using Realm. And one of Realm's cool new features is its built-in cloud data synchronization. And you can see in this short video how this built-in data sync in the cloud makes it quite easy to build a real-time messaging feature. If this is getting you curious about Realm, you can find out more information by clicking the link in the description. It will give you access to some tutorials and to the code of a sample app. And finally, if you want to experiment with this cloud data sync mechanism, you'll want to know that it comes with a free tier for learning or for running a small app, and that you can get even more free credits by redeeming the code that's appearing on the screen right now. Once again, I have a big thank you to Realm for sponsoring this video. And now let's start talking about the coordinator pattern. And to begin, I want to show you a small app that I have built. As you can see, this app queries an API and displays a list of upcoming movies. And I want to specifically direct your attention to the two kinds of navigations that can happen from this screen. First, if I click on the movies in my list, as you can see, we are going to navigate to a detail screen that's going to display some more information about the movie that I clicked on. And then if I go back to the previous screen, swipe right on a cell and click on the share button, as you can see, it's going to open modally a UI activity controller. So now that we've seen how these two navigation look like from the point of view of the user, let's take a look at how they are implemented in code. For that, I'm going to switch to the code of the view controller responsible for the screen that displays my list of movies. So it's a controller called movies controller. And I'm just going to scroll to the part of the code that is responsible to handle these two kinds of navigations. So here's the code. As you can see, inside the method leading swipe actions configuration for row at index path, the first thing I do is that I get the movie that corresponds to the line in the table view that the user is interacting with. Then I create an activity controller and I pass in the title and the overview of the movie. And finally, I present modally this activity controller. And you can see that the code also follows the same logic for when I tap on a line of the table view, because in the method did select row at index path, as you can see, first I get the movie that corresponds to the cell that the user has been interacting with. Then I instantiate the view controller as going to display the details of that movie. And finally, I navigate to that view controller. And here I do it by pushing it onto the navigation stack. And what's interesting here is that when we consider these two examples, we could say that our view controller is implementing three different responsibilities. First, my view controller must be able to respond to an interaction made by the user. And so this is going to happen either in methods like table view did select row at index path or table view leading swipe actions configuration for row at index path. Then the view controller is responsible for instantiating the new view controller that will be displayed. So we can see here I am instantiating my UI activity view controller. And here I am instantiating my movie details view controller. And finally, the view controller is responsible for displaying the new controller here by pushing it onto the navigation stack and here by presenting it modally. And if we take a step back, we can find that, of course, the first responsibility, so being able to respond to an interaction made by the user, it makes sense for the view controller to implement it. But on the other hand, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that the view controller knows what is the next view controller to display. Because by doing so, we've actually coupled our two view controllers together. And doing so is actually going to make it a bit harder if at a later point we need to refactor our navigation logic. And finally, the fact that the view controller is also responsible for displaying the new view controller is also far from ideal 
because doing so is going to make it harder to programmatically trigger a navigation. For instance, if the user is opening the app by clicking on a push notification that mentions a particular movie. So what we want to achieve here is to be able to take these two responsibilities, so instantiating the new controller and displaying it, and put them into an object that will be responsible for implementing this navigation logic. And of course, as you can imagine, this object will be none other than our coordinator. So let's actually get started and implement this coordinator. First, I'm going to create a protocol that will describe what a coordinator is. So first, a coordinator must be able to store an array of child coordinators. This way we can implement complex nested navigations. Then, since the screen flow of my app relies on a UI navigation controller, I want my coordinator to also own that UI navigation controller. And finally, I need a method start coordinator that will be responsible for the initial hookup of my navigation logic. And now I'm going to implement the main coordinator that will be responsible for the navigation logic of my app. As you can see, I've implemented its two properties and now I'm left with implementing the method start coordinator. And this method will be quite easy to implement because I'm just going to reuse code that is already existing inside my app. So I'm going to move us to the code of my scene delegate. And as you can see, in the method scene will connect to session, I already have the code that sets up the navigation of my app. So what I'm going to do is take this code right here. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it inside the method start coordinator. Now I'm just going to rework this code slightly to fit the structure of my main coordinator. So I'm going to get rid of this line right here because my navigation controller has already been instantiated at that point. And instead, what I'm going to do is that on the navigation controller, I'm going to push the initial view controller with animated set to false because this is what's happening when the app is being launched. So now my main coordinator has been implemented. I just need to actually use it. So for that, I'm going to go back to the scene delegate. Inside my scene delegate, just as I am storing a window, I'm also going to store an instance of my main coordinator. Then I'm going to instantiate the main coordinator. And finally, I'm going to set its navigation controller as the root view controller of my window. And now I'm going to build and run my app once more just to make sure that it is still working as expected. As you can see, it's not working as expected and it's because I've forgotten something that is very important and I'm sure some of you have already noticed what it is. I've forgotten inside my scene delegate to call on my main coordinator, the method start coordinator. And as you can see, now my app is back to working as expected. So now it's time to go back to my movies view controller and extract its navigation logic into my main coordinator. So first inside my main coordinator, I'm going to implement two methods. The first one will be called share movie and the second one show details of movie. Then I'm going to switch back to the code of my movies view controller. And here I'm going to take these two lines right here. I'm going to cut them go back to the coordinator and paste them inside the method share movie. And here, instead of using self, I'm going to use my navigation controller. And as you can see, just by doing this, now the logic responsible for instantiating the UI activity view controller and presenting it has now become part of the main coordinator. So of course, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the logic to display the movie details view controller. So I'm going to select the code, cut it and paste it inside the method show details. And I just need to remove this question mark right here. So we are almost done. Now the last question we need to answer is how do we make it so that our view controller is able to call these two methods? And for that, I'm going to add a new property in my view controller. So just like my view controller has a view model, my view controller will also have a weak reference to my main coordinator. And this weak reference is going to be set inside the main coordinator in the method start coordinator. Just after I have instantiated my initial view controller, I'm going to set its main coordinator. And finally, now that the main coordinator property has been implemented, I just need to go back to my code right here. So first the code that reacts to the user clicking on the button share. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get the main coordinator and on it, I'm going to call the method share movie. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the code responsible of reacting to when the user taps on a cell, except that this time on the main coordinator, I will call the method show details of movie. 
And finally, I'm going to build and run my app one last time so that we can make sure that it is still working like it was before I moved that code to the main coordinator. So my app is back. And as you can see, when I tap on a cell, the app still navigates to the details of the movie, except that this time it's no longer the movie's view controller that is responsible for instantiating the controller with the details of the movie and then pushing it onto the navigation stack. This responsibility is now part of the main coordinator. And it's the same thing if I go back and I click on the share button. Once again, the same action still happens, but just like before, the code responsible for it is now also part of the main coordinator. So what should you take away from this video? Basically, what we've learned today is that the coordinator pattern is a pretty useful architectural pattern for iOS apps that allows us to take the code that is responsible for instantiating and navigating to a view controller and extract it to an object that is responsible for managing the navigation of the app. And by doing so, we've been able to decrease the number of responsibilities our view controller need to take care of because now my view controller is only responsible for displaying the data and responding to user events but it's no longer responsible for instantiating the new view controllers and navigating to them. And finally, we've seen that even though the coordinator pattern is pretty powerful, it's also quite simple to implement. So if you're working on an app that doesn't use the coordinator pattern and you think that introducing this pattern could simplify the code of your view controllers, I can only encourage you to give it a try because you should be able to get some interesting results pretty fast. And that's all for this video about the coordinator pattern. Once again, I have a big thank you to Realm for sponsoring it. Remember, you have a link in the description if you want to learn more about their product. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time.